Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the X Factor session of Symposium, otherwise known as Make Me Over Real Time Site. Not criticisms, but renovations. So, um, the idea with this session is that, uh, we, as you know, we've, we, um, we asked customers and you know, the, Twitter, the Twitterverse and the emailverse to nominate websites to be subjected to a, a real-time makeover suggestions from a panel of uh, MVP digital strategists. The idea with this session is that uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty sort of um, fast-moving uh, concept where the digital strategists have a lot of experience with assessing customer websites with regard to the capabilities that are uh, possible in Sitecore. And, uh, because, and then they sort of take that experience look at the nominated sites, the sites that we selected for the nominations, which I'll talk about in a minute, and provide a number of suggestions for how these sites could um, benefit, let's say, from the different capabilities that are possible in Sitecore. So for those of you who are um, considering you know, it, uh, adopting some of the capabilities, uh, we think it'll be a great uh, inspiration session. For those who are using, you also may, may, may find some uh, different inspiration as well. So the sites that we're going to be making over today, um, in the order that we'll do them, a website, Atlantis the Palm, Colette Travel, Nordson, which is a B2B, and Canadian Auto Association of Southern Ontario. Just really quickly, is there anyone from Atlantis the Palm here? Yes. yes? Uh, Colette, we know that already. Um, Nordson, yes? And C, yeah, Canadian Auto. All right, great. So, um, so fentastic. The idea is it's, it's a 10 minute, each, each site gets 10 minutes. We want to get four in. We want, we want to get a lot of ideas. And we want to get the perspectives of the different um, uh, MVP uh, digital strategists. And I think it was, it's uh, quite nice to get a sense of the different styles, the different opinions, um, the different ideas. We had originally, put, so we have Chris, Jill, and, um, and Tom. Uh, we're not going to do a lot of introductions because I want to leave time for, for, uh, for, the, for the 10 minutes uh, each. We had originally planned for four strategists, but due to travel changes, um, we're now three. So we're going to actually have a kind of a discussion uh, for the fourth one, which I'll lead. So with that, I would like to turn it over to the first digital strategist, Jill. So can we give Jill a round of applause, get her in the mood? There we go. Can you guys, can you hear me? Yes. yes? OK. I've had visions of falling up the stairs, so I think we're off to a good start. Um, <laughs> my name is Jill Grzalski. I'm a marketing strategist at Genuine Facebook Office. Um, and I took a look at Atlantis to Palm. So just to give you guys a little bit of information about them, um, ocean theme luxury hotel located in Dubai. And as I was starting the process, I really wanted to think about what their business objectives are and really taking that lens in terms of how I would optimize the site. So I think pretty straightforward for a resort site. The primary goal is to increase the total number of bookings. And then thinking about some of their secondary goals, not only just the number of bookings, but the total value of individual bookings, so with cross-sells and upsells and things like that. And then also to just increase the number of cross-sells and upsells across the site. So after something is booked, having users come back to the site, adding on dinner reservations, things like that. So as I was looking through the site, I sort of picked three core ways that I would optimize. The first being using analytics and conversion data to tailor the site for the user. The second being to profile content to understand their interests and really serve up content based on their identified preferences. And then the last to be testing content to increase conversions across the site. So the first. So thinking about the site and knowing that the ultimate conversion is to book now, the way that the site is structured today, it's a lot of exploration of content and the ultimate conversion being that book now and very few micro conversions. And so when I was thinking about that, started to you know, think about how I could use browsing behavior and that major conversion to identify different visitor groups. So there's three groups that I identified, the first being new visitors, so people coming to the site for the first time, 
The second being return visitors who I know have not converted, and I know that by tracking different goals in the system um, and what they've converted on in their experience profile. And then the last being a converted visitor, so someone who's returned to the site maybe a number of times, has completed the book now, and now has a very different need. So for the first, new visitors, really, you know, I don't love to focus too much on tailoring the first experience because I think we need to learn a little bit about default browsing behavior to understand who the user is. But I do think that there are some ways to still have that natural path and personalize. So being able to use out of the box rules for GUIP tailoring or campaign codes. So knowing that the Atlantis has some paid promotions using um, Sitecore's campaign identifier tracking that and then personalizing the homepage so that the content and the call to action is consistent upon their first touch point. And then also being able to use things like time of year and whatnot to promote maybe a New Year's party or, and updating the homepage to have a very prominent call to action for that specific event, which will then lead them into um, booking a room and, and booking a stay. For return visitors who haven't converted, so I'd know this based on their experience profile if they've been their visit numbers more than once, but they still don't have an engagement value score. Um, being able to update templates to support additional calls to action and really promote this book now. So I know that they're interested, but they still haven't converted. So being able to serve up strong content that is really promoting ultimately what I want them to do. Um, so promoting that on the homepage and then across other templates deeper in the site. And then for return visitors who have converted, they've taken that action of booking a room, so now they're probably looking to different activities that they're gonna do. So the book now call to action isn't really relevant to them anymore, so being able to update the calls to action on different templates, promoting specific things that they can do, whether it's attending a water park, um, purchasing tickets for a special event, things like that. Um, being able to promote those specific options at the top of pages and then having strong calls to action for cross-sells, upsells throughout the experience um, is a good way to really personalize to their need at that point. The second way that I would optimize the site is profiling content based on their preference. So being able to use Sitecore's profile cards and pattern matches to really understand their behavior, the type of content that they're interested in. So, some of the ways that we could do this, you know, the navigation is set up in a great way to really tell us a lot about the user or the visitor. Um, you know, if they're looking for family-friendly events or if they're there for a special event such as a wedding or they're, they've been browsing a lot of spa content so it's a relaxing vacation. So based on the different pages that they're visiting, I can identify their preference. So just an example is, as they're going through the site, if they're looking at a lot of kid information, um, you know, it's most likely that they're doing sort of a family-friendly vacation. I can then, upon their next visit, tailor the homepage to promote different kid-friendly options and things like that, um, personalized deals on the homepage for family packages and whatnot. The next, deeper in the site, as they're continuing to browse, so let's say they're looking at a restaurant reservation, and I know that they have looked at family-friendly things in the past, I can serve up um, a call to action, it'd be a little bit straighter, um, but to enjoy a, a romantic date night and explore our babysitting services. So I know that they're there with their kids, but maybe they wanna get out on their own and enjoy some of the award-winning restaurants there. Last, I couldn't make it to the final booking without um, booking a room, so I apologize. I'm not sure what the actual confirmation page looks like, but still carrying on with their preferences, being able to get to a confirmation stage and serve up tailored calls to action based on the preferences for cross-sells and upsells. So um, if they've looked at the helicopter tour before, they booked a room, but they haven't added that on yet, I'd be able to serve that up and get them to reserve now um, or promote a different activity there. So just based on their preference, making sure that those cross-sell upsells are really tailored to what they're looking for. Then the last way to, to optimize is really to leverage the testing functionality within Sitecores to increase conversions. So the question is, you know, across the site, are users facing choice paralysis? So are they getting too many options throughout their journey and it's hindering them from booking? So being able to test different layouts and you know, remove certain calls to action to see if maybe that will convert them more or sooner upon less visits. Um, using the home page as an example with our three options there. And then at the bottom of several pages, there's three different options. So maybe reducing that down um, and testing which one would convert more. Also throughout the, the booking, um, 
shedding light on what leads to more add-ons throughout the process. So right now, once you book a room, the call to action is customize your stay, which allows you to add on day trips. So maybe, I don't know if that language is the strongest that we could have, and testing that would allow us to see which, which language is getting us more calls, or excuse me, more add-ons throughout the booking process. And then lastly, just some future considerations. Um, knowing that there's a lot of content here and a lot of things to do, being able to build in an itinerary functionality or an add to favorites um, is a great way to collect user information, understand what their preferences are, the things that they're interested in, and also create a logged in portion of the site so that we're continuing to collect information, use that for things like email marketing, future nurturing down the road. Um, so just, you know, a, some functionality to think about in terms of adding on and using all that information to continue to optimize. And that's my site. Right. So, thank you for that. We'll have our next makeover artist, Tom. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jill. That was really good. So, I think I'm kind of continuing the uh, the, the travel theme, and and I've got I'm going to have a look at a site called uh, GoCollect.com. So. Colette was new to me, I hadn't heard of it, but actually on reading about it, it's a pretty interesting brand. It's an online travel agent, um, they've been around about 100 years, and uh, really their unique point of difference is they sell these package deals to, uh, that can take you to any continent, and, and they're sort of all-inclusive, really nice, you know, experiential things. So as a, as a travel agent, really what they're all about is selling packages, but that in itself is a fairly long and involved process. It's a high consideration thing, so there's an element of data capture along with that to build out customer uh, CRM data, and then there's also an element of inquiries and progressing a booking through to that, uh, progressing a customer through to that booking point. And uh, probably the first thing I noticed looking at the site is it's actually pretty well put together. Um, I was impressed by what I saw. It's a very polished site. It's very visual. There's lots of beautiful imagery. There's some great video. Uh, and actually, as far as, as, as context marketing is concerned, they do a pretty good job. So I noticed that when I arrive at the site, I've got a VPN. I tried a, different, a few different regions. It will, it will detect where I am. It'll give me some nice content that, that, that maps to where I'm coming from. Uh, I noticed that as I cruise about, I consume content. When I go to the deals page, it will, it will kind of uh, construct some recommendations for me that align to the things that I've done. So by no means, these guys are uh, at square one. They're, they've made some progress. But with that in mind, I think there are a few things that, 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 that we can look at. Probably the first thing I'll say is uh, there is a bit of a glaring issue that I found, which is um, you've got New Zealand sitting in there as a uh, on the Australia continent. I don't know if there's any Kiwis in the room, but. You've just alienated an entire country. <laughs> so in order to think about this, I think we always start with the customer. What is the customer journey? How do they go from being unaware to booking? Um, and this is a very simplistic way of thinking about that customer journey. So there's a dreaming phase. It's emotional. It's, you think about uh, destinations. You put things on your bucket list. And at some point in the future, you'd like to get there. But it's, it's kind of nonspecific. At some point, there's a trigger. And then you say, OK, rational thought. I need to book. I need to plan things out. I need to think about money. I need to think about dates. We call that the planning or the booking phase. And then finally, you travel, and you do a whole lot of stuff after that. Obviously, it's cyclical as well. So I looked, and I found about five, I guess, little opportunities. I think we can optimize that experience using Sitecore's context marketing. So number one, I'm really interested in that acquisition story. Number two, I think some of the acquisition pieces around data capture can be um, optimized. Number three, I think that trigger um, idea is a really interesting opportunity to look at. Uh, next, once you get into that booking stage, I think how can we pivot the site and, and really adapt to that more rational kind of thought processes? And then finally, how do we encourage ad ad advocacy for people who have traveled? So meet, meet Jane. Jane is, um, I kind of tell this story through Jane's um, uh, through James's lens, um, and the first thing we need to do is start thinking about who Jane is and what are the profile attributes we want to collect on Jane to really understand her as, a, as an individual so we can start adapting that experience. So Jane is, she's, she's, uh, she's married, she's in a couple, no kids, she's, she's American, East Coast, and uh, she really wants to go to Australia. That's, that's number one on her bucket list. So I noticed going to the Colette Facebook site, there's some pretty good content there. It's, it's rich, it's engaging, um, and I, I can find some nice stuff on, on, on their wall. I can click through to that and can find a nice landing page on the Colette site. But obviously today, the organic reach 
of that type of posting is very low. I mean, the chances that will find their way to Jane is, 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 is impossible. And Jane, at this point, knows nothing about Colette. So the idea is, how can we use Sitecore to connect with Jane as someone who's completely unaware of us and what we do? So I'm really excited about this. This is one of the newer features we're seeing. And it's the idea that you can look in your experience database. You can build out a segmented list of your customers. And this can be based on a range of uh, contact facets, so bits of information you're storing about customers. And it can be based on other things like uh, pattern cards that triggered. And what we can do is we can build out that segmented list, and then we can pump it into a Facebook custom audience using the Comfo social connector. Now, that's pretty much hot off the press. So if you don't have that, you can also pull out an extract using the experience extractor in a CSV file and plug that directly into Facebook. Now, what this gives us is a group of people in Facebook who are your customers. And then where the magic happens is being able to expand that to totally unaware people using lookalike modeling in Facebook to say, find me people like our customers who we'd like to talk to who match these, this profile. And then from there, we can promote the post and we can say, OK, here's Jane. Let's stick this nice inspirational video in an instant article or in a Facebook posting. So I think that's a really good opportunity. I don't know if, if, if you guys are doing that, but it's one thing to think about. So Jane clicks on that promoted post, and she thinks this is great, and she lands on the Colette site. And what I noticed, and this kind of threw me a bit, was bang, I get this. After about 15 seconds, it pops up and kind of says, give me your details. And I think that's a bad experience. I think at this point, I'm like, what do I get? Who are these people? I'm only just really getting into this. I'm, I've been interrupted. And it's not very clear to me what the, uh, what the value is. What do I get by signing up? So I think it's helpful to think of this as a value exchange. If I'm going to give you my personal data, you need to give me something first. And I think a good way to think about that is we can use engagement scoring as people move about the site to track the level of engagement they feel with Colette. And then find that point where they've looked at a product page, looked at a couple of product pages, done a search. We can make that judgment. We can say, yeah, we think these guys are pretty engaged. Why don't we invite them to join our list? And I actually think that at that point, because you've developed that value exchange, there's an opportunity to push it this a bit further and say, well, hold on a sec. What are your travel dates? Are you thinking about traveling soon, next month, six months' time? And I think then you know, it's, a, it's a snowballing effect. So Jane's come to the site. She's given us her data. Um, and we know that she'd like to go to Australia. She's looked at some product pages. We've started to build, that, build out that profile. But we want to find that trigger. We want to find the thing that makes it that moves it from dreaming to booking. So for some people, that's going to be an offer or be a, you know, a discount. For some people, it could be an event. They'd love to get down to, to Australia for a particular thing. And it could be that she's on the East Coast, and it's winter, and it's freezing, and she just wants to spend some time on a beach. So once again, by building out that experience profile and using engagement scoring to really understand the types of content that are resonating with Jane, we can start to get a sense of what we think that trigger point might be. So. What I'm suggesting is once she's consumed some product pages and we can get a sense that, yep, she's, uh, she's fit, she's active, she's healthy, she's into sports, we can then say, all right, let's not leave this to chance. A couple of days later, if she hasn't come back to the site, we can trigger an email and we can say, Jane, the Australian Open, it's in January, it's 42 degrees in Melbourne, it'll be, the, it'll be, it'll be wonderful. Why don't you come back to the site and, and check out a package? OK, so now. She's on the hook. She's, uh, she's looked at some, some, uh, some products. She's, she's had that email. She's come back to the site, and she's highly engaged. What I noticed is that home page is fairly static. It's a bit of a one-to-one -one ex uh, one -one experience. It's, it's, it's not especially personalized. And more to the point, I think it's really targeted at people in that dreaming phase. It's big, glossy photos. It's all about that emotional response to destinations. I'd love to be there. I'd love to go there. One day, I might get there. But actually, I think. For Jane, in this phase of her life cycle, we need to be thinking in terms of that rational decision making. We need to be positioning call to actions around price, around dates. We're going to make it real, because that's the hardest thing, I think, in, in travel booking. It's, it's, it's to sort of create that urgency to say, do it now. Don't do it next week or next month. So really simple stuff, but I think this is about looking at CTAs over the site and start saying, let's make this just a little bit more product focused, a little bit more price sensitive and, and, and planning focused. OK, so we were successful. Jane went away. She, uh, she bought the trip. She uh, ended up uh, going to the Australian Open, spent some time on the beach. It's a good thing to do. 
the relationship doesn't end there. So there's still an opportunity to re-engage Jane, pull it back into that cycle, and continue the conversation. Because I think we really need to be thinking about selling a lifetime of package tours, not just one next week, or not just you know, a gift or a special occasion. So using, again, an engagement plan, we can trigger a date off the back of her travel dates, and we can re-engage her at a point in the future. It could be a couple of weeks in the future, she's come back, she's done a laundry, she's, she's unpacked the luggage. And we can say, all right, Jane, why don't you share your experiences on social media? Why don't you come back to the site, fill out some UGC, maybe leave some ratings and reviews? We've re-engaged her, and we also get the benefit of that, uh, of that content as well. OK, so they're the five recommendations I came up with. I won't read, read through those in details. I think, Chris, you're going to share the deck. Um, but in short, I think think about the customer, think about that life cycle, and look for those little moments along the way where you can really have a big impact using context marketing. So our next speaker, Chris, or sorry, should I say makeover artist? Sorry. Makeover artist for 45 minutes. Makeover artist. I'm, I'm Chris. I'm with ARC. I had a chance to speak with uh, Natalie and Rachel about uh, their site. Uh, last week, real quickly, just to understand some of their top-level goals. Norsen EFD is a, uh, a B2B organization. They create dispensing um, equipment for a broad range of industries and products. Um, and, and at the end of the day, I think for uh, a B2B business, there's kind of two primary roles for a digital property, right? You've got to create demand. So who are you adding into the top of the funnel that might get filtered down to a, a sales channel and uh, their, their director through a channel, but also um, their team uses the site a lot to push out product, right? So kind of building that credibility, referencing links out to uh, customers and whatnot. And so the, the recommendations that came back with are really around kind of those two aspects. How do we use the existing framework? And we've got some limitations because they, got, they have a corporate brand that kind of controls the header and the footer. And then we can play with everything in the middle. So as we go through it, we're, uh, we're focused on how do we create demand and, and be a good resource to that sales department. Um, so kind of two, two parts to this, I thought about what are just the, the tweaks I would make to some of the design aspects that allow us to capture more and give our visitors those opportunities to convert. And then thinking about the experience platform, what are some really tactical things that they could leave the room with today and go implement that would give them new analytics and interesting things that they could then start to uh, make decisions around. So the first one is this idea of the, uh, the looking for the expert and kind of that box there they have under expert help. Um, our, our experience with B2B sites is these opportunities to convert kind of the hot lead, request a brochure, request a catalog is something that be, should become pervasive in the site. It should be uh, you know, in the header, kind of follow the user around and always give them an opportunity to click that request in RFP. Um, so I think a small tweak there, I mean, they've, they've got it. They're doing it on the homepage. Just a small tweak there to have it as kind of a secondary menu that's always available um, would, would drive a lot of additional conversions into the uh, sales funnel. Uh, my second one is, and, and again, tremendous amount of content. They have products pages, solution pages, industry pages. Um, and it's just, it's very rich in content. But there's not a lot of opportunities for me as a visitor to say, oh, I'm, I'm caught in this moment. I'm going to you know, give an email, give an email and a first name to go cap, you know, download something or get engaged in a newsletter. So I, I would absolutely figure out somewhere, right? Pick one of these spots inside of the site where you could create conversion opportunities. And that could be download the associated case study. Um, that could be just sign up for a newsletter. You could test out different things to see what's gonna convert best. But again, just top of the funnel stuff. How do we get people in so that we can start working them through nurture plans and engagement? So. I think a lot of times we get into these with clients and there's very much a, where do we start? What do we do next? We don't know enough about who's visiting. It's all anonymous, nobody converts. Um, and, and I think one of the easiest things you can do is just go set up goals. It, it takes a couple of minutes, you go set your goals up, you go apply them to a handful of pages. Um, you come back in a month and you see what people are actually engaging with, how they're actually getting there, right? Just the simple idea of setting those goals up are gonna make Path Analyzer, which has been demoed a lot, valuable, right? It's gonna give you something you can look at and see how people are getting through uh, the different parts of the site. So I, just a couple that, you know, this, uh, if you do a search for engagement value scoring, that's the, the site core version of it, right? They just have that pyramid out there. I think there's a PDF that you guys could download and fill in. But that, you know, so on the right-hand side, I have the, the handful of areas for the Nordson site that I would go out and create goals around. Um, keyword search, 
it's easy, right? You go create that goal. You go to the page that they end up on. If they've done a keyword search, you attach the goal there. Setting up those six goals would be, um, I think, pretty valuable. And again, kind of get you tactically right into getting value out of the, uh, the analytics engine. Next, thinking about A-B testing. So again, all of the pages have this very rich amount of content. I would think here is another place to talk about the, uh, some kind of form where they could convert. I think there's also just testing the, uh, the language in the calls to actions, right? Is it related information? Is it a case study? Can we promote different products through A-B testing and giving them the, uh, the chance to see um, if you were to run tests of products and product imagery, start to figure out which are the most popular products and let those win the A-B test for the, the related product section. Um, I also think that with those engagement goals set up, you would, should be running tests that are tying people back to one of those six goals. Right? So if, if we see that we can drive more people into converting a form or ending up on the buy online page through a tweak here, that's what those A-B tests are going to be best used for. Um, next, and again, just thinking about how do you start to get more out of the Sitecore analytics engine, is the, just the idea of profiling content. And again, I think the, the first time you have that conversation with a customer, they say, I don't have the time or the energy to go profile 3,000 pieces of content. You know, I've got much better things to do with my life. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be that complex, right? So, uh, you know, they had four big industries there on the right-hand rail that you can see, automotive, electronics, life sciences, and mobile devices. And you could set up very simplistic profile cards that just say, if somebody clicks into a piece of content that's under one of these sections, give them that score, right? Give them a, a profile card that aligns to that category. Now, you go back over into the analytics site, and you've got that profiling, and you've got those goals set up, and you're going to be able to see kind of what industries are giving you the most value, right? So you've kind of doubled down on the value you get out of analytics with some very simple tweaks. Also, GOIP, I think all three of us now have mentioned GOIP, so if you're not doing that, that's an easy one. Um, Nordson runs a, a set of events, and then their salespeople run road shows. You know, so very simplistically, if you're doing something in Chicago, do a homepage takeover that is promoting that Chicago event if somebody's visiting from that area a month before, the week after, whatever it might be, that just is in line with those emails that are going out promoting the road shows or those emails going out promoting these events. Um, so here, here's a, an interesting one. They, they have an online portal where you can buy things. Again, kind of I didn't do the checkout. I don't have an account. But I imagine you go over to a site where you can log in, but it was not a site core site. So here's where we would use uh, FXM. So Federated Experience Manager, you probably heard a little bit about this. Um, it's one line of code that your team can go put on any other site, and it takes all of the power of Sitecore and it drops it out on that other site. So the way that we've used this at Dollywood, and I'm stealing from uh, Jennifer's presentation here now, um, at Dollywood we use this for the store site. And out on the store site, it's not Sitecore, but as you go through the funnel process, which is those five areas up there, FXM is calling home and giving us the data that we need to see people that left the site core site move through the sales funnel. So kind of line by line, we can see, OK, you're on stage four. Again, thinking about having those goals set up the right way. We can see where the exit points are. We can see who moves forward in the sales funnel. Um, and then lastly, we're on the final page grabbing revenue off of that external e-commerce site and sticking it back into Sitecore, so then we can take those goals that we had and tie them to what was the revenue that actually was generated. This is, um, for the one line of code that it takes to deploy this, really, really straightforward and really easy to do. Um, so highly recommended for any external sites that you might be managing. My, my last one for Nordson was just the experience, kind of taking advantage of engagement plans. If you think about the idea of having FXM out on that site, if you logged in, now I pretty definitively know you're a customer versus not a customer. So it's very easy to drop those individuals that made it out to that third-party site and got through the login into a customer-based engagement plan versus folks that have never been out to that buy online portal and just re re talking to them like they're not a customer. Um, I think you can also then start to think about cross-sell and upsell in those A-B tests and what you're promoting up there based on the product pages they went to and what they purchased. Um, and, and I think, again, um, something else, given the amount of content, if I've never been into that customer form, think simply. 
how do I, how do I trim down what's happening on the site, on the homepage experience, to someone that's not a customer, that doesn't know your product SKUs, that doesn't know, you know everything about you, but has ended up there because of the search terms and they know the brand, right? So keep it simple for those people that might not be customers. Canadian Auto. So a round of applause for Chris. No, I'll, I'll call you up, I'll invite you up. So now what we want to do is uh, sort of a um, little bit of a change in the plan. So I'll just walk us through a couple of ideas with um, Canadian Auto Association of uh, South Southern Ontario. And I said Southern Ontario before. So South Central, or let's say Canadian Auto Association. So probably many are familiar with in either uh, US or Canada, you know, 3A or in this case CAA. And uh, just, to, just to clarify, um, certainly have a number of existing members, and this is something that stands out to me. I think I'll, I'll think about uh, customer utilization and customer retention. Uh, they sell products, they sell services, um, certainly known for roadside service, so there's some classic products. Opportunities to sort of cross-sell over to uh, other product areas, travel, for example. Uh, also, I see also insurance here, and they have the offline channel and the online channel. So when I do an assessment of a customer, if I'm going to make recommendations, which is kind of what I do in my daily work in Sitecore, supporting our partners and, and provide, uh, creating best practices for use for, for, for partners and customers, this is the kind of typical thing that I do. Just go in and make an initial assessment, what kind of business, what kind of, what kind of objectives, you know, un, uh, understand the business objectives. So um, without having to do a lot of you know, analysis, I can see it's, you know, customer acquisition is probably a big priority. Um, you know, cross-sell to existing members is probably a big priority. I mean, you have that great, you know, uh, well-known uh, brand, um, lo a lot of members, and, you know, there's opportunities to generate revenue from that base. So, and customer utilization is important because if you don't get value, you don't renew. And that's, you know, you know qu quite essential. And I also noticed that the site is, um, there are some uh, values that they want to associate with a brand with regard to uh, things that matter to a lot of people, environment and so forth. So I, looking at the site, um, I, I identified uh, four issues and I'm only going to cover three of them. Um, everyone will get the material uh, that we're showing here today. If anybody wants to receive it you know, qu more quickly, give me your business card when, when we're done and I'll email you a copy rather than the, the Sitecore machine that's going to follow up to this, or this, the symposium machine. So personalization to increase membership signups, and I'm looking at membership renewal, and I'm thinking about cross-sell. Yeah, we'll call it cross-sell. Um, so those are the areas based on the objectives. So when, when you come into this, you know, where do I start? Um, you know, what do I personalize? It's not everything. You don't personalize everywhere. Start with your objectives. Start with the most important goals, your most important business objectives. And that, that's the way I think about this. So, and I'm guessing that membership acquisition is, pr is probably an important one. So, um, uh, looking at the site, um, I see that there is the opportunity to, you know, understand what what um, what's the deal with membership, what, what kind of memberships, and so forth. So there's content about comparing memberships, and uh, there's also categories of information. So this is kind of a good place for me to start. I want to tap into customer intent. If a visitor is on this page, then I think they're interested in they're considering membership. So how can I how can I make that more relevant and a more relevant and meaningful experience? So a lot of real estate developed or, or devoted to this uh, graphic and the, the the text that I see here. There's so there's a, a point of impact. Looking at the whole page, there's some content in the middle, and then there's some quite it's kind of content at the bottom that I think a lot of us can relate to. You know, I want to I want to make a comparison and side by side. It's kind of useful. A little bit low on the page. Um, so then I, 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 look, I, clicked, I looked a little bit uh, around on, uh, in the content and I saw that there is this um, uh, area here where it says, you know, which membership uh, fits your needs best? Get started. So over here, the button over here. So this is cool. So I click it, you know, you click it and you see that you're, you're prompted uh, to provide some feedback based on your, pre your preferences. So the first one is, you know, how much do you drive? You know, more, more than 10,000 kilometers. So you can answer that yes or no. Do you own a motorcycle? Yes or no. Uh, do you take, you know, are you a, are you a, a long, you know, driver? You know, a long distance driver. Um, uh, it, more than yourself, you know, fa potentially family or at least um, partner. And then there's a recommendation here. So what happens is that there's a real convenience going on. It's easy and it's a little bit fun to answer this, right? And at the, so I'm motivated as a visitor. 
and I'm also sharing data at the same time. And you can decide you know, how much of that data you want to tap into, but at a minimum, I started this and I finished it. So that shows some, even if you're not even going to collect my answers or, or you know, uh, you know, use that um, as a sort of like a, to try to create a better experience for me, you know, the fact that I've started and completed it, that's, that, that, this is some of the customer experience data gold in, in my view. Um, there's value for me to interact. So if I've done that and I come back to this page, it's currently static content, there's a great opportunity to, be, to create a degree of relevancy that is you know, generally relevant for basic, what I answered. Do I drive long distances? Uh, did I say yes to family? You know, so there's an opportunity to you know, use personalization rules to, to provide personalized content and put the call to action up here, you know, shorten that path to completing the, the, um, the thing that you want them to complete, very essential. So what I'm suggesting here is that there's possibility to use personalization. And certainly this one, like, if that's what you found out, like, make it easy for me to, do, to complete that. So a little, some real simple personalization uh, on that one. Um, historical data uh, and personal, to, for, for personalized content. Um, if you, yeah. So in Sitecore 8.1, you have the possibility to tap into the historical data uh, in the personalization rules. So what, what I'm zo um, zooming into here is, Open up Sitecore 8.1 or 8.2, go into the, cut, into the rules editor, type the word past, and you'll see all the rules that will enable you to dip into, pat, into the history of previous visits for the contact who may be in a current visit. And if I zoom into this, this is out of the box stuff, the kind of data that you can tap into. And the, the idea with this is that this indicates your intent as a visitor, what channel you've come from, online, offline, organic search, uh, and, and so forth, goals, um, campaigns is also on here. I don't know why I didn't, uh, I didn't um, ca catch that one. Maybe it's below. Uh, also really important in terms of tapping into intent. And you can also uh, extend the out-of-the-box uh, you know, uh, data that's in the experience profile, XDB, and you can c capture custom data, explicit data, and other kind of preferences, and use those in personalization rules for, for relevancy. So with that in mind, let's, uh, let's you know, one of the best places to start is you know, where the most traffic comes in. Organic search is a great place to start working with personalization because that's where the pure intent starts. Uh, although I'm using a branded keyword here and you see some possibilities, th this, it's often in, in here with organic search and branded or non-branded. So here's something about membership renewal. It's, one of the, it's, a, it's a popular uh, keyword. Remember what I said about the data that's stored here out of the box, and now we have this experience. When I, when I press the link from, from the organic search up there, it's this page about renew your membership. It comes to this page here, and I can see it's a legacy page, and there's probably some story where some of the site is on the new, the new design, some is on the old design. That's life. Um, sorry that I bumped into this one and I'm showing it here, but you know, this is what we find. Uh, there's a button here, so there's a page here and a, and a, a place to say re renew online. Now, um, Thinking about the data, if I'm coming back, I'm an existing customer, so you, you probably have some data on me over here, and you can use it up here to create a degree of relevancy. Right now, it's, it's kind of wallpaper, but you, know, you have this possibility, am I a traveler? Am I a family? Do I travel? Do I, have I booked uh, travel packages? Uh, have, I benefited, have I used the roadside service? And, and so forth. So th there's, a, there's a, you know, provide some payoff. Why should I renew? Um, don't assume that you have the customer. Um, th this whole thing where the, uh, you know, the, the, the funnel is dead kind of thing is what I'm suggesting here. So there's a possibility to put up some messaging that's relevant you know, where you're tapping into the, um, the visitor's historical data. And, and it, should you click further, you come to this page, which is quite generic. And again, you want to personalize up to the moment of decision. And this is what, what I'm recommending a lot, and this is what I see customers having success with. It's not just the landing page. It's not just the home page. It's the journey to completing the call to action that you're, that you're interested in having them complete. So again, same, and you can just repeat the same rules on this page, and, then, uh, and that would do it. Thanks for joining, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and ha safe travels.